time for Seattle Sips where we check out some great drinks in our area and learn how to make them ourselves. Yep, and today we are joined by expert mixologist and author Nick Mottone. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. So you're getting us ready for the first day of summer. You've got some refreshing cocktail recipes. Yes, I do. Um, and they're all from your new book, which we have right here today, The Artisanal Kitchen Summer Cocktails. Welcome back to the show. I think Thank you were you. here on the first day of spring. That's right. Yeah. So great. Back for the first day of summer. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So it's sort of entertaining. Yeah, we're going to be doing some summer drinks using infusion. So what does that mean and how is it done? Okay, so I'm going to talk and explain at the same time. Perfect. So when infusion is when you take fresh fruits, berries, herbs, things like that, anything you want, you put it with alcohol in our case, and okay. you just let it steep very gently. Okay. okay. Now, as opposed to maceration, which I would do, mm. uh, is something a little bit different. And this is huckleberries. These are uh, Pacific Wild Pacific Northwest huckleberries. Ooh. Okay. It's an offshoot of a drink I used to make, the Blackberry Daiquiri at Gramercy Tavern. But here, huckleberries run wild. Yeah. So by stirring this together, you're creating what amounts to a maceration. You can see that. You know, it's beautiful. getting thick and beautiful, and yeah. if I mashed it down, it, it would it would turn into something completely different, right? So and then I'm going to add some cordial. This is Liquor 43, which is a vanilla liqueur. Mm. Oh, vanilla. Okay. I'm going to add some dark rum. And you could do anything you like. You could put vodka, you could put gin. You could oh, put okay. So you can change out the spirit. Change out Drink the spirit. of choice. Okay. Now, you let that sit for a couple hours to a couple of days, yeah. and you wind up with this. And this a is couple of gonna, days, you said? A couple of days or a couple of weeks. Oh, I mean, this is dang. alcohol, right? So it's yeah. going to stay. I mean, you could freeze it and use it months later. It'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. And uh, my pro tip for the day is use that in a boozy milkshake. You're going to have a blast. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, this so feel little, yeah, little vanilla ahead. ice cream and uh, huckleberry uh, mixture. This and that's, infusion is awesome. So I love an infusion. I feel like if we would have called jungle juice an infusion, it would have a bad <laughs> reputation. <laughs> we were all doing it in college. <laughs> What kind of food pairs well with this drink? Okay, so this is one of those really, really great drinks. It is a daiquiri at heart. Mm -hmm. So it's rum, simple syrup, lime juice, in essence. All right, okay. so where you happen to be making flavored rum to, to do this with the huckleberries. Because it's fruit forward, it's perfect for summer entertaining. It's going to be perfect for stuff on the grill. It's going to be perfect for a summer tomato salad. Uh, it really will go with just about anything that, that you make because it's got nice acidity, nice fresh fruit flavors, yeah. and, and it's very, very well balanced. So good. So let's put this drink together. Okay. Then. All right, let's start. Let me get some ice. Excuse me there for one second. I love seeing people's different ice carriers when they come mm -hmm. to our show. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use, now you could use, um, you know, a, a regular cordial if you like, like a blackberry liqueur or something, mm -hmm. but I'm going to use the infusion we made. So I'm putting a couple ounces of the infusion in here. Okay. That's going to give us the flavor and the color, and I left the berries in as mm -hmm. well. Nice. And I'm going to start with a couple ounces of rum. I know you'll get the recipe up there. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Don't worry. Or, you know, pull out your pen and, and paper right now. <laughs> Whatever you like. We're going to put some lime juice. I love a little citrus juice. Yeah, lime and lime. You've got it. It's, it's the also acidity good. makes yeah. it food friendly, <clears throat> makes it flavorful. And then we're going to do a little simple syrup. So this is going to tie everything together with the sweetness. And that's the classic daiquiri. Rum, mm -hmm. lime juice, simple syrup. Mm. Simple three ingredients. Okay, we're going to... Shake, shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. Shake away from you so I don't stain you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I've actually never been hit by someone shaking one of those yet, but there's always a, a, new, always a, first, a new opportunity for that. <laughs> so we're going to strain this. Now look at the color. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. pretty. So fun. It's so fun and summery. Wow. Look at that. Did it take you a long time to develop this recipe? No, this was, as I mentioned, uh, back in my days at Gramercy Tavern, Thank I used you. to make a blackberry daiquiri to have summer entertaining. And it just became a fan favorite, one of those ones mm. that you, know, you couldn't, mm. you had to have on every summer. And then when I you know, left Gramercy and started my uh, mixology career, uh -huh. if you will, this became part of my summer entertaining. And I just switch up the berries seasonally. So use raspberries at certain points in time. You know, yeah. We've got a lot of golden raspberries where I used to live in New York, so we'd use those. But here, of course, you know, huckleberries, and I got Marion berries from oh. Portland. Oh, my Oregon. gosh. So use any of the local fruits and berries, and you come up with something so really, really tasty. good. So tasty. Okay, so let's talk 
about this other drink that you're going to be making for us. I feel like these are so summery. That they definitely are. Mm -hmm. So this um, is uh, one of my absolute favorite, you know, entertaining drinks. It's sangria, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone, I think, knows what sangria oh, is. Sure. You, know, you take leftover wine or wine that isn't <laughs> so good, and you mix a bunch of other stuff into it, and, and the next thing you know is you have something sweet and fruity and, and, fru mm -hmm. and flavorful. But I think you can go one step better. Okay, so this okay. is my white peach sangria. Okay. okay. And we're going to start by putting... Uh, the peaches, of the course. Peaches, the peaches, of course. And I'm going to give a shout out to my wife right here because this is one of our fam favorite uh, entertaining pitchers. Uh, was <laughs> given beautiful. to us when we got married 20 years Aww. ago. Um, the only problem is I, I say she never lets me use it for sangria because she always has flowers in it. Does she know <laughs> that you have brought it today? Does she know? Uh, I, I hope so. She's still packing up. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Okay, so what I have in here now is I put the peaches, I put sugar, mm -hmm. and I've got cinnamon, star anise, vanilla, mm -hmm. and cardamom. Okay, and we're Beautiful. just going to mix those up, okay? I can even smell it from over here. Really? It so you good. can smell yeah. it from here. Okay? Yeah. Now, what I would add for that, no, normally this would be hot water, so I'm just going to put a little hot, well, pretend hot water. Sure. That, I'm happy to pretend. <laughs> that uh, helps the, uh, you stir it up and then it helps the sugar dissolve mm -hmm. and it helps the spices open up a little bit. Sure. Okay, so now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. This is peach nectar. Mm-hmm. And the thing I love about sangria is that you can, I mean, you can kind of work it a little bit, right? If you mm -hmm. want it to be a little more fruit forward, throw in a little extra fruit. That's exactly. You want it sweeter, put more sugar. Mm -hmm. You can put agave nectar. You can do just about anything you want. Okay, Beautiful. so that was orange juice because I like orange uh, flavor. <laughs> and this is lemon and lime juice. Oh, really yum. Okay. Then, now this is one of my favorite trends for the summer is uh, fruit brandies. Oh. Uh, so I feel like it's one of those um, one of those ingredients that is starting to come out. Um, this one happens to be peach brandy because we're making peach sangria. We'll add that in. But fruited brandies are really a special uh, treat for me. Mm -hmm. now, I'm going to use rosé in this one. Love rosé. Beautiful. That's a deep color rosé too. It's a too. deep color rosé. Pacific Northwest, of course. Yes. All right. Now I do think we just have a few more moments. So, all right. Uh, so we would stir that up. Just yeah. let it sit. And this is good for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, if you want to keep it in the fridge. Take off the fruit. You sure, could freeze sure. it. Really? You could freeze it. That's and then fun. We'll tell you why. So here's a, a batch that I've made. Um, oh, already ready. Already I feel like ready you're really trusting us with these family cups too. Yes, I am. I'm going to be very careful. And ooh. So to, to articulate the fruit, the frozen fruit, oh, I made this in advance a week mm. ago. Oh my stuck god! Stuck it in the freezer, thawed it out two days ago because wow. I brought it here for you. So that when you want your entertaining tip for the week, you know, this is beautiful, so fantastic. These both have such deep flavors, so much more than like so many summery cocktails that you Thank think. You. I absolutely Thank love these. Thank you so much, Nick. My pleasure. Come back and see us again for fall and winter. You How got about a deal. that? Sounds great. <laughs> We've got a link with these drink recipes up on our website, fox13seattle.com/studio13live. And coming up next, Anita.